With mayhem inside and the embassy now burning, Sim Harris is still left crouching on the balcony. I could hear behind me, you know, bullets, gunshots and, and, and grenades going off and all sorts of things. Um, and from above, debris was beginning to drop. I went to stand up and somebody screamed at me, get down, stay flat, stay flat. So, you know, I'm, I'm shouting, I'm going to burn to death. I mean, if you stay where it was, you wouldn't even get touched in flames, really, you know. Um, but panic, I suppose, set in. So it was bring him back over to the other balcony to bring him back into the room, because he wouldn't come through the flames. I mean, because all the curtains were all falling down, uh, there was shit coming off the ceiling, so it was starting to burn. I mean, it was hot, because, I mean, my, my boots were actually melting. No, I burnt all the soles in my boots. I was prepared to jump. I thought, it's one floor. As long as I can avoid those spikes on the railings, I'll jump. And I kept wanting to go and to stand up. And they kept shouting to me to stay down, stay down. And then they actually threatened to shoot me if I, if I stood up anymore. To shoot you? Yeah. I presume it was to persuade me to stay down. And then they said, look to your left, look to your left. And I turned round and there was a guy in all of the gas mask and all that sort of thing, and gloves, and he was beckoning me over. And I leaned out and I'm going, come on, come over, you know. And eventually, he got enough his courage up and I just reached over and brought him in. So I then did what is now lovingly called my balcony scene of, of leaping over the, the, and back into the embassy. And I thought, this is madness. They're taking me back in again. What the hell's going on? We brought him in, uh, and that's when he was like, tch, tch, calm down, you're all right, you know. Held him, and then he was passed down the chain, you know. It was just a calm, I mean, he was, <laughs> he was, he was shitting himself, you know. By this time, they were getting the hostages out. And I tell you, when the SAS gets hostages out, they don't mess about. They were getting hold of us and just throwing us down the stairs. <laughs> Hand to hand, boom, 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 down they come. Into our hands, whap, 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 out the door, out the door, out the door. And now there's smoke, now there's fire as well. Um, so we want these people out quickly, because now we've got the threat of fire as well. And we want to get ourselves out as quickly as possible. As I grabbed the fellow and pushed him past me, remembering that we were all wearing respirators and we couldn't identify each other, but the hostages we could see and identify. As he went past, I knew that I had seen him and I couldn't for a, a second or so, remember where I'd seen him from. But as I let him go, and he was passed on down the line, I remember from the, the photos, and people behind me started shouting, that's a terrorist, that's a terrorist. Up on the stairs, there was a voice that shouted, he's a terrorist, he's a terrorist, and we saw somebody stumble down the stairs. And nobody could actually open fire, because if the guys on the stairs had opened fire, the bullets could have gone through the person and hit somebody behind. If we don't fire the same situation, if we'd hit the terrace where we were, the bullets could have ricocheted into our own men. And then somebody shouts, grenade, and he had a fucking grenade in his hand. So as he came clear at the bottom of the stairs, there was me and two other guys standing there. And as he came clear, we just, we all fired a burst each, and the guy had 27 holes in him. That was it. There was no, no drama. His body just went, that was it. He was on the floor, dead. Did you shout a warning? No. <laughs> no, we shot him. He had a hand grenade, we shot him. That was it. End of story. No reason to give him a warning. He might have had time to pull the pin out and throw the hand grenade in that time. Had you killed a man before? Yes. Um, it was a job well done. There was no emotion at all. It was um, one of the simplest experiences up to that point in my life. The actual assault takes 11 deadly minutes and leaves the embassy an inferno. There's gas, there's confusion, and across in the far distance, staggering towards the front door, I could see Trevor Locke, and I ran across and grabbed him and pulled him towards the door. That was great, that, that felt brilliant because we knew from that point in time 
that our number one priority had been achieved. Trevor Locke was out of the building and he was alive. The hostages are bundled out of the back and manacled face down on the ground. But there's one hostage too many. The routine is that everybody gets handcuffed, whether they're hostages, whether they're terrorists, everybody gets handcuffed. You've got control of them. They're not running around like chickens with their heads cut off. You've got them where you want them. And you've got Sim Harris on the floor lifting his head up and shouting across, that guy's a terrorist, that guy's a terrorist. They said to me, is he a terrorist? Are you sure he's one of the terrorists? I said, yes, I am positive he's one of the terrorists. And they lifted him and he went off behind me somewhere. One of my team actually goes across and picks this guy up to separate him from the group and starts to walk back towards the building with him. So um, myself and uh, the other team member, we went across and said, uh, I think we should put him down here because we weren't quite sure where he was taking him. You say you weren't quite sure where he was taking him? We weren't quite sure whether he was going to take him back in the building or if he had any other ideas. So we just made sure that the procedures were followed correctly. And those other ideas might have been? Some people would have expected him to have been taken away and killed, but that would have been totally against policy, totally against the rules. And we had hundreds of policemen, and we had people with cameras, and we had the world's media on us. It would have been a very foolish thing for somebody to make that sort of mistake. The operation is a spectacular success. All but one of the remaining hostages come out alive. The SAS withdraw to Regent's Park barracks for a debrief and a beer. This loaded beer turned up. Everybody in this room, you know, have a few beers. And there's a television set up. And all these tins of beer, so everybody's sort of, shh, shh, you know, quick swig, as you do. It was known around, and then Maggie just appeared. Maggie, a hubby, and uh, one of her bosses, you know, the Colonel White, and a few other odds and sods, you know, it's normal, they'll hang it on. Like. Suddenly, we go into the big, I suppose it's a sort of sitting room uh, with a huge television set, and about 40 SAS, and with an incredible atmosphere. All, they all seem to be rather small men. Most of them appear to have slightly ginger hair and ginger moustaches and bottles of beer in their hand. And the state of excitement was something I've never seen in my life before. It was sort of like a pack of hounds. Just, they just roared their welcome. And uh, the air was thick with testosterone. It was an incredible atmosphere. Both her and her husband were very, very casual, and uh, he was very, very much on our side, and he was quite upset that one of the terrorists had got it, I think, because he, he told us in no uncertain terms that we had failed in some respects. What did he say? He had a big grin on his face, but he was... Uh, his exact words were, you let one of the bastards live. Suddenly, it was going through the, old, the start of it on the telly. It was like a news flash thing, you know. You see you? Ah, yeah, I see me. 30 seconds, 45 seconds later, a second explosion. Of course, I'm trying to watch this. I mean, well, to me, it's not a funny thing. I'm like, and there's this head right in front of me. You know, I'm a short ass, but there's this head right in front of me. And I said, the fuck, you know, I didn't know whose head it was, it was Maggie. You know, I said, move your fucking head. I did, I actually swore, you know. And she, oops, sorry. And she just moved. You know, didn't bat an eyelid. She just moved her head, you know. And she was actually sitting watching it as well, you know. I believe a brilliant operation yeah, 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 yeah. by the Special Air Services with courage and confidence. And I agree with my honourable friend that the performance both of the police and the SAS made us all, on all sides of the house, proud to be British. Yeah. The message to terrorists was if you come...